Have you ever bitten into a piece of fried chicken or a freshly cooked french fry and heard that satisfying crunch before you even taste it? That sound alone can trigger hunger. Crunchiness is one of the most loved textures in food, especially when it comes to fried dishes. From street food stalls to fast food chains to home kitchens, fried food has a universal appeal. But while we all enjoy the crunch, very few people stop to ask an interesting question. Why do fried foods become crunchy in the first place? So today, we'll answer that irresistibly crunchy question, right here on History of Simple Things. At first glance, it might seem simple. Food goes into hot oil, comes out crispy. But there's a lot happening beneath the surface in those few bubbling minutes. Crunchiness is not an accident. It's the result of heat, moisture, chemistry, and timing working together in a very precise way. Understanding this process can completely change how you look at fried food, and maybe even how you cook it. The story of crunchiness starts with water. Almost all foods contain water, whether it's a potato, a piece of chicken, or a battered onion ring. When food is placed into hot oil, the oil doesn't actually soak in right away. Instead, the intense heat causes the water inside the food to heat up rapidly. As the water reaches its boiling point, it turns into steam and tries to escape. This escaping steam is incredibly important. As it rushes outward, it pushes against the oil, preventing it from penetrating too deeply into the food. That's why properly fried food isn't greasy inside. The steam also creates tiny bubbles at the surface, which is why oil appears to boil aggressively when food is added. These bubbles are visual proof that moisture is leaving the food. As the surface loses moisture, something crucial happens. It begins to dry out. Crunchiness is essentially dryness combined with structure. When the outer layer of food becomes dry enough, it stiffens and hardens, forming a crust. That crust is what your teeth break through when you bite into fried food, producing that crisp, crackling sound. Temperature plays a huge role here. Frying usually happens at temperatures between 170 to 190 degrees Celsius. This is hot enough to evaporate surface moisture quickly, but not so hot that the food burns instantly. If the oil is too cool, water escapes more slowly, allowing oil to seep in. The result is soggy, oily food instead of something crunchy. When the oil is at the right temperature, moisture leaves fast and crunchiness develops before oil has a chance to take over. But moisture loss alone doesn't explain everything. Another key player in crunchiness is a chemical reaction called the Maillard reaction. This reaction happens when proteins and sugars are exposed to high heat. It's responsible for the golden brown color of fried food and a huge portion of its flavor. The Maillard reaction also strengthens the crust by creating complex, rigid structures on the surface of the food. This reaction is why fried foods don't just look brown. They look evenly golden and textured. It's also why they smell so good. The Maillard reaction produces hundreds of new flavor compounds, giving fried food that rich, savory aroma that's hard to resist. Crunchiness and flavor develop together, reinforcing each other. Batter and breading take crunchiness even further when you coat food in flour, breadcrumbs, or batter before frying, you're essentially adding an extra layer designed to lose moisture and harden. Flour contains starch, which absorbs water from the surface of the food. When fried, that starch gelatinizes, then dries out, forming a crisp shell. Breadcrumbs and coatings create even more texture because of their uneven surface. Tiny peaks and ridges form as they fry, increasing surface area. More surface area means more moisture loss and more Maillard reactions. 
That's why breaded foods often sound crunchier than plain fried foods when you bite into them. Oil itself also plays a subtle role. While oil doesn't create crunch directly, it transfers heat extremely efficiently. Hot oil surrounds the food completely, cooking it evenly from all sides. This uniform heat ensures that the surface dries and crisps consistently rather than developing soft spots. Oil also helps carry heat into the coating, activating those browning reactions that harden the crust. Interestingly, the type of oil matters too. Oils with high smoke points can maintain stable frying temperatures without breaking down. This stability allows moisture to escape properly and prevents the food from absorbing unpleasant flavors. When oil degrades, it can interfere with crust formation, resulting in food that's less crisp and more greasy. Crunchiness is also affected by time. Fry food too briefly, and there's still too much moisture in the outer layer. Fry it too long, and the crust becomes overly thick or even burns. The ideal crunch exists in a narrow window where enough water has escaped to dry the surface, but not so much that the food becomes hard or bitter. Once fried food is removed from oil, the crunch doesn't immediately disappear, but it is fragile. As the food cools, steam trapped inside continues to move outward. If that steam gets trapped under the crust, it can soften it from within. That's why fried foods left sitting too long start to lose their crispness. The moisture has nowhere to go, so it settles back into the crust. This is also why stacking fried foods or covering them tightly is a bad idea. Trapped steam raises humidity around the food, rehydrating the crust and turning crunch into sogginess. Professional kitchens often place fried foods on wire racks instead of plates to allow air to circulate and moisture to escape. Crunchiness isn't just a bonus, it's the main event. So the next time you bite into something fried and hear that satisfying crunch, you'll know it's not magic or luck. It's water escaping as steam, heat triggering chemical reactions, starch is transforming, and oil delivering energy with precision. All of it happens in seconds, but the result is something humans have loved for centuries. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.